So, so the Alter Rebbe now says, how is it that the Shechina rests on a person? So again, page 88, after the words be Yichud Gomer, about nine lines down. The idea of the Shechina dwelling on, in, a, on, in a person who gilu yalekusi yisborech. What does that mean, the Alter Rebbe? What, what does it mean, the Shechina rests on me? It means that godliness is revealed in you. When you when you look at when you look at the person, you see God. You feel God. Gili and the is baruch. Hashras hashrina means there's gili. So, for example, we talk about in the base hamikdash. You came. There was a shchina there. That means that whoever you were and wherever you are, uh, when you came there, you became godly. You became holy. So too, when a person has the shchina rest on them. Godliness, gilui elikusa is barich. It means the revelation of godliness, voiri self baruchu, and the infinite God, beis a dover on anything. The avahainu, loimar shoyse dover michlo ba'ir Hashem. This means to say that this item, where the shechina rests on this item in a revealed way, that item is nichlal. It's absorbed. Be'ir Hashem in the light of God. What does it mean? It's absorbed. It means that it's subservient to God. It doesn't, it, it, it uh, annuls its own will to the will of God. Shows, who shashoyinum is godly by his borech? Echot, Hashem echot. Then we say that the oneness of God, Hashem echot, enoid milvadoi, is rests on the person and is revealed in the person. Avo. This, by, by the way, Moshe explains a little more about what you asked me about. Avo, however, legambri, and the word legambri here needs to be underlined and emphasized. Whatever and whoever is not completely nullified in his or her existence, in its existence, completely, totally, absolutely. We cannot say that God's presence is rest and revealed in him. Look what he says now. The av tzaddik gomor shem is dabit by biyavarabi, even a complete tzaddik that attaches himself to God with an abundant love. Had a last machshavet to be so very cloud beemis. No thought can grasp God in its in in full truth. Ki amiti shashem alakim who yechude vachdusi is borech because the truth of God is God's oneness. Shehu levadi who he's by alone. The f is bil odi mamish. The imkain, if so, zehoayev, referring to the tzaddik, even the tzaddik, this person who loves God, but nevertheless, shehu yesh, he has some yesh in him on some level, on a refined level, v'loy efes, and isn't not completely, let's makshav delay, it is impossible for that person's mind. Tfisa be cloud to grasp God at all. He doesn't have a- any of God. He has fascinations. He has emanations. He has thrills. But he doesn't have God. The ain't Eir Hashem Shadum is Galaboy. Except Eli de Kiyoma Mitzvah. This is his point, my Shem. You know the way Hashem's presence rests and it's revealed in a person? By doing a mitzvah. Because mitzvahs are the will and wisdom of, of God in actuality. That's tangible. Believe Shum Hester upon them without any concealment of the of God's presence. In this bracket, the Alter Rebbe, I'm not going to learn it inside, but the Alter Rebbe says here, it's once it's one of two times in the entire Tanya where the Alter Rebbe mentions Mori. Look at the first line. He refers to the Magid of Mizrich. As I heard from my teacher, Olav Asholem. What did he hear? He, he heard that the Magid say that where is Hashem reveals himself in Chochmah. Why? Chochmah is Koachmah, the potential of what is. Chochmah is the faculty within the, within the person that is bereft of yesh, right? From bina on yoni, there's understanding with my mind. That means I am a something to understand. Chochmah is the flash of God, the intuitive flash 
flashes through. And, and therefore it's called an idea. It's a creative idea. And someone says to Yoni, what happened? what's the idea? What, what? I don't know. It just came to me, but I, I, I can't. I don't have, right? That's the position of Chachmo. In order to, to be able to explain an idea and articulate, and Moshe, you know, in your, your field, this, this, you know this as an artist, it, it, it's like, ah, and someone says, what's the ah? I don't know. And then you start drawing. And, and later you say, oh, that's what I had in mind way back. But in, in, the, in, in the mode of Chochmah, you couldn't articulate. So the Alter Rebbe, said, the Alter Rebbe quotes the Magid. That position in, in God's revelation to, to the world is what we call Chochmah. And only over... So where does Hashem rest? In Chochmah Sheben Nefesh, it's called. In the faculty of Chochmah within the soul. So he, he brings this over here uh, as a hago, as a kind of a footnote to his remark in, in the text, which says, Believe Shum Hester upon him. Hashem rests without any concealment. Let's continue. We're towards the bottom of 88 Hillel. When a person learns Torah, then a person's soul, which is a godly soul, together with its two garments, the inner garments, they alone, the speech. That he talks like I'm talking now, saying Toido. Umachshav, I'm using my thought. Next page, top of Memhe. Nichlola is Ba'ir Hashem. They're incorporated in the infinite Ains of Baruchu, in the infinity of God. Um Yechod is Baby Yechod Gomor, and they're united with God. Vehi Ashro Sashchin al Nafsheli Kis. When we learn Toido, two of our garments, i.e., speech, Abram. And Machshava are united with Hashem. So God is resting. There's Hashra, Hashchina. There's the resting of the divine presence in the speech and in the thought of the person. Right? Let's continue. Kemay Marazal, as the rabbis, the sages say, Shafilu Even when you yourself, one person alone, is learning Torah, Shchina Yimoy. How could that be? Normally we should have ten, if not ten, Yidin studying together, three people. But the Chazal say even one. Why? Because each time you utter words of Torah and you think words of Torah, Shechin is also there. Ah, however, If you want to draw the light and the energy of the Shechin, Gama Gufoy, you don't want to just inspire your godly soul. You want to inspire your body. And your animal drive, which are very coarse and corporeal. Which vivifies. That's actually invested in the body. So over here, saying, uh, you're not in shul, you're not in base medrash, you're not learning, you're working. You're run, going for a jog. You're driving, right? Here, you're in a different world. Here, your goof and your nefesh abamis seem to be in full control. And over here, you want the shechina to be as well. It's not enough to have the shechina inspired the nefesh elikis. Big deal. The nefesh elikis is a, ve- a vessel for the shechina. So the nefesh elikis is a good boy. The nefesh elikis listens. What about the nefesh abamis? That's what he says. Tzoruch lekayim mitzvahs maisios. Here you must fulfill actual, real, earthly mitzvahs. My, mitzvahs maisios. Right, Chevra? What do we say? Anshe maiser. What Hillel and Moshe were talking about. Men of action. Here, it's the foot soldiers. They have to go in to Gaza somehow to get rid of this enemy. The fact that there's planes bombing and everything, the drones and everything else, doesn't get rid of that Gashmiz the body that's under the earth in a tunnel. And unfortunately, they have to go in. It's, 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 it's the Nefesh Habamis. 
In other words, when you're inspired with Nefesh Elikis, it's very, very nice, very good. You know, when the Hasidim came over from Russia and from, from Europe and they came to America and, 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 and they finally, you know, they survived, their parents, grandparents were shot, were lost. And they finally make it to Kronites, comes along a new young Lubavitcher Rebbe and he says, go out on Shlichus. He wants their kids to go out to Timbuktu to put on film with Jews and, 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 and you know, and do it, what a Chabad Shliach does. And they say, Rebbe, we haven't rested. We've been running around since 1920s in Stalin. We've been running for our lives. We finally came to America. We have a little respite. Let us rest a little bit. Let us go to the country. Let us play some golf. It <laughs> says the Rebbe, no! I need your kids, your sons and your daughters. You are old geezers. You go to the country. They? I need them to go out and make Eden. I need them to go to Haight-Ashbury and to go to Woodstock and to go to all over and find a Jew and bring him back to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what I need of them. That's Nefesh Abamis. That's inspiring Nefesh Abamis and Gufay. Right? To, to inspire people, come to a Fabrengan in 770 or in, 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 in Ramat Bechemish in Eish Kodesh. That's wonderful. But they're, they, you guys are there already. So Moshe's son picks himself up and he goes out to Mishkalitz, Hungary, right? He has a good life in Eretz Yisrael. And, you know, it's Eretz Yisrael. He wants to get, he wants his nefesh habamis and his goof to feel God, not just the soul. It's the same idea, says the Balatanya. That's why this chapter is the chapter that teaches us this, that over here, it's not enough just Dibur and Machshava. Here you got to have Maise. Maise, let's continue. And that's why he says, that's why he says, because then the power of your goof that is invested in your action of putting on the film and walking to help someone and schlepping the packages, our nichla are incorporated Hashem in the light of God with its and God's will and is united with Him completely. The who levushashlishi. Here we tackle and incorporate what we call the third garment, which is maase action shenefeshalikis v'azai. So then, also the vivifying soul, the vivifying energy in the body, mamish is elevated. Shemeklipas noiga, the sapech it's transformed miral atoy from bad to good. The nichla mamish, the kedusha kenefesh kedush mamish, and it has the same aliyah. It, it's submerged in the Godhead with holiness, just like the nefesh elikis mamish. Meyacha shehuhu. Again, look how he uses here twice the word hu hu in it. Shehu hu hapoyel v'oise ma'isa mitzvus. Who is the hu hu going on? Yes, sir. Hello. Excellent. I see you listening. Good. Shehu hu hapoyel v'oise ma'isa mitzvus. It it the nefesh apam is that grub thing. It is. Doing the ma'aser, the mitzvah. Shebelodoi. For if not for the nefesh abamis, lo yhoisa nefesh elikis po elis beguf klal. The nefesh elikis would have no impact on the body. Yoni. It's like I'm a Jew at heart. I'm a Jew at home, and I'm a non-Jew in the street. That that idea, no connection. You want the street to go along with you. You got to get the nefesh abamis involved. That's what he says. And he says, Vaiter, ki hu ruchnis. Why? Because the nefesh ki is spiritual. But hakuf kashri v'chumri, the body is physical and corporeal. But hamamutza b'neyem, and the intermediate between them, who nefesh achiyun is abamis, is the vivifying animal drive. Hamalubeshes b'dama odem, a reference back to chapter 1 in Tanya, that's invested in blood of man. She believe me, that's within your heart. V'chol hakuf. And, 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 and throughout the body. Now Dr. Rebbe has a rhetorical question. Although the very core essence of the Nefesh HaBam is in the heart, 
which are it's not nice, it's bad character. Putting on tefillin, Hevra, doesn't mean that you're a mensch. Okay? It doesn't. Right? We see it every day. It also doesn't, it also doesn't mean that we're transgender. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> let's leave that for another time. Mikol Machen, nevertheless. <laughs> you threw me for a loop pillow. Well. Mikol Machen, nevertheless. Me'acha, listen to this, he says four things here, very beautiful. The Iskafi on Kedusha. Now, this Mikol Machen Chaver begins the retort to his rhetorical question. Nevertheless, Me'acha, the Iskafi on Kedusha, since the Nefesh Eliki, Bami is. Although it's not transformed completely, but nevertheless, it subjugates itself to Kedusha. And it says, yes, yes, mommy, yes, tati, yes, boss, what do you want? I'm ready to do it. And it's forced to answer amen, right? You slept your nefesh into the shul for the first minute. You only want to sleep for another two hours. And the Baal says, Kaddish, and you answer amen. Your nefesh is saying the amen as well. It doesn't want to be there. He wants to sleep. He wants to jog. But you say, no, no, come here, Nefesh Abamis. You got to come along with me. I got to go to shul. So he subjugates. He goes along. Once he's already there, he, he, forci he forcibly says, Amen. This is more, Moshe. Not only is he forced, he is agreed. He goes from being forced to say, Amen, and he agrees, you know? It's not bad to say, Amen. Um, misratzen. Misratzen is even more than maskimim. So we have three language, three words here. It's kafyon, balkorcha, which is, you know, subjugate and force. Then we have agreeable, maskimim. And number four, we have um, misratzen. Um, misratzen means he becomes favorable. So he goes from being forced into the shul to kind of saying, okay, amen, to saying, hey, this is pretty good. I'll, I'll do that. And then he develops a real love for it. And he says, I love to answer a man. Last is a mitzvah. He has these four stages in doing the mitzvah. And has that happen? Because his nefesh elikis, which resides in the brain, a reference to moyach shalat alev, dominates over the heart and makes the heart feel this way. Mind over matter, the paradigm shift to the point where I want to do it. I like doing it. Although, if you like doing it, why do you have an indulgence still? It says down to that, because we already explained in chapter 13, Tanya, there's something called being dormant and asleep. It's there. It's always there. In other words, it's always within a yid to do Hashem's will, favorably, not just forced to do it, pressure to do it, right? But the thing is, it's b'b'china shina, it's asleep. V'lokach, therefore, e'nzu meniyeh ma'ashroz ha'shchina al-guf adam, fascinating insight. Dr. Rebbe says, this does not, this is not an obstacle from uh, having the shchina rest on the person's guf, b'shozu, the, 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 the energy of the, of the vivifying soul that's in, invested in, when, in, in doing the mitzvah, the energy exerted when we do a mitzvah, it's incorporated in the energy of Hashem, and it's united with one completely, and through this mitzvah, this one mitzvah, it draws down the energy, the animation, to all of the vivifying energy within the body, the gamma guf hagashmi, and even on the physical body. Now, this is interesting, Hillel. What the Alter Rebbe is saying here, and the, the is the doctor, the Alter Rebbe is saying here that the koyach of a mitzvah makes an impact on the body, on the overall body. Now, what's the Kesher between putting on tefillin in the morning or doing another mitzvah and my health? 
So, you know, we always say Ruchnius. Now, the Rebbe says here, I think, a different word. It's not just Ruchnius, it's Gashnius. When you, when, when you're when your body becomes a vessel for God, your entire your entire body is is elevated. That means it becomes healthier. And of course, of course, if we see someone or we hear about someone who's not that way, there's you know that, that you have to send an email to Hashem. Hashem knows the souls, reincarnation. This that. that but we're talking about in the normal situation, not in a reincarnation situation, not in uh, uh, other reasons why God might make a person who was a mitzvah man throughout his life or, or a woman and they become very ill or they lose their minds and they get Alzheimer's and it's very tragic. I knew this Rav here, this Paisic, uh, already in his uh, 60s, he had Alzheimer's. It was, it was such a going and such a Paisic for a whole community and Nebuch, we don't know. We don't understand. But what we do know, the Alter Rebbe says here, that in, in the norm, the entire goof receives an elevation through the one mitzvah that's done. The gamma goof agash with his makabu mile mereshiv adragu. So it's an, it's in a way, the way it impacts the goof is in a way of what calls hovers over from head to toe. Now back to page 90, next page. This is what the Zohar says, that the Shekhinah rests where? Areshi. Right? What did the Yenuka say? Where does the Shekhinah rest? On the head of the person. Says the Alter Rebbe, Al Daike. In other words, why does it say, the Shekhinah Shar Yereshi? Where does the Shekhinah rest? In the head of the person. The Zayra Kodesh doesn't use that language. Veshchina Sharia Al Rishi. Right? If we say Tfilin Sheberosh, we don't say Tfilin Al Harosh. The Tfilin in the head. We're putting on the Tfilin on top. But the idea is that when we put on Tfilin, there should be a Shibud Haleva Hamoach to the point like the Tfilin is in my head. I become one with the Tfilin. So the Zohar Kaddish asks over here, the Alter Rebbe, excuse me, asks over here on the language of the Zohar Kaddish. The Yenuka says, so too, Shechina Sharia Al Reishe. What Al Reishe? Shechina Sharia Be Reishe. Says the Alter Rebbe, why? This is why it says Shechina Sharia Al Reishe, Al Daike, because it's only Makif. It only hovers over him. If it was bepnimius, Moshe. If it's inside your bones, your 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 your, your um, intestines, it's it, you know, it's really it, who you are. That's not I. But <laughs> what? Yeah. But since oh, since we're talking here about a person who just did a mitzvah one time, Misa, so the Alter Rebbe says that it impacts all of the body. But in what way? Only in a way of makif. And the same is also the concept upon all ten. The shechina rests. In what way? In a makif way. It doesn't mean to say that when ten Jews get together, which is the gvaldic, a minion, and all that, the shechina is inside every one of the ten. No. That takes panemius. It's there. You got, you got the shechina now here. But the shechina begolui and the shechina makif. So the Alter Rebbe says so too. From the as important as it is to do a mitzvah, Maisius, as he explains, nevertheless, without avoid the the shechina still is bemakiv behine. Kol pchinas hamshochas oir hashechina she pchinas gili oiras of baruchu. Wherever we talk about the drawing down of the, uh, the energy of the shechina, you know, re- revealing the infinite light of God, ain't a nikri shini chasushon. Now here the Alter Rebbe kind of addresses a separate thing. It's not separate, but nevertheless, it seems separate. And that is, if the Shechina wasn't here before, the Shechina's here now, isn't that a change in God, God forbid? It says, It's not a change in God. And it's not considered multiplicity. Kedisa B'Sanhedrin, Gemara says, The Omer Le'ahu Mina L'Rabbi Gamliel, 
this uh, this heretic said to Rabbi Gamliel, "Abrisu kol be'asor shchin to Sharia." You say <laughs> that on all on each on all ten people when they get together, the is there. Kamer shchin to Yislechu. Avram, the the heretics asks Rabbi Gamliel, "How many shchin do you got?" You mean you got a group here? You got a group there? That means you obviously have ten different shchinas, five different shchinas. Ve'hishiv loy. So the Rabbi Gamliel answered the heretic, the Apikoyres, Moshul me'ir ha'shemesh ha'nichnes b'chaloy nisrabim. The Moshul of the sun, one sun, and it goes into different windows, many different windows. So it appears in different colors and different shapes and all that, but it's all one sun. V'chulu ha'maskel yavan, and the wise one will understand. So in other words, and this is explained by Riches Shari Yichid Vemunu, some of you learned it or are learning that, the idea is that there's only one day Eberstedt. There's no Shinui and there's no Ribui. The manifestation of God is in different forms depending on the Kali. So when you put water, the part that's the Moshe with Isser is we put water in a colored glass, it has one color. You put it into another glass, it has another color. You're going to say there's a change in the water? There's no change in the water. The water is the same water. What makes it appear different colors? The Kali. So, so too, there is one Abish there. There is no Shinui. So, Dal Terebe brings this, this section here, because he mentions a Kobe Sara Shrim Tesharia. A Kobe Sara Shrim Tesharia. The idea is that there is only the union of one God, and this God is, is, is Shayda on the Yid, on the Yid when they learn. So, this Padic, we finished here, this Padic. Dal Terebbe emphasizes, if you want to give a kind of a one-liner to page 30, chapter 35, the virtue of Maise HaMitzvah, that's gr- the greatest form of re- connection to Hashem. And that's why even put, putting on film one time with the Yid is as important as anything else. Surely if you can get, if you can encourage them to, to do more Gvaldic, but but it's in that one Maise HaMitzvah that binds the person with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Once you're bound, it's going to, it's going to stir things up. It's going to stir things Not today, tomorrow, not tomorrow, you know. And we see now, Taka, with the war, how many Yidin all over. Mamish, the world. If you guys pay attention to the Chabad websites at all, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying if you do, People coming out of the woodwork, they want to put on tefillin and there's campaigns of buying tefillin, sending tefillin. Then the, I know the, the, they had the mitzvah putting on the tzitzes for so many soldiers that Hevra were making in B'nai Brak and other Haredisha places. The point is, Lev Yisrael, eh, the heart of a Jew is awake. The, the Jewish heart wants to do the Ebush to the Rotson. We just have to give them a chance. Hevra, stay safe. Have a great Shabbos. We'll see everyone. It's Hashem. On Monday, chapter 36, Monday. Zaygazon Shalom. Bye, good Shabbos. Bye, bye. Take care.